Today on The Hookup, we're gonna take a look at the most intimidating type of security camera, the pan tilt zoom or PTZ camera. In the past, when people have asked me to review PTZ cameras, I've always said that you'd be better off buying a few different stationary cameras and point them at each area of interest 24 seven, instead of relying on a PTZ camera that may be looking at the wrong place at the wrong time. After testing these nine cameras, I mostly feel the same way, but I do think that some of these cameras are useful tools to add to your security system, while others are just toys. In today's video, we'll compare their field of view, then daytime clarity, pan and tilt accuracy, pan and tilt speed, zoom performance, nighttime performance, and finally, we'll take a look at some extra features that some of these cameras have to offer. All of my tests were completed in the Blue Iris NVR software, unless otherwise noted. This video is sponsored by HolidayCoro.com, one of the largest light show vendors in America. And the best time to get into the hobby is right now in the off season. By starting early, you can make sure that you're all ready to go when Halloween and Christmas sneak up on you. Holiday Coro has you covered with pre-built kits, including props, controllers, LEDs, and power supplies to give you that boost that you need to start your first show, or maybe just level up your existing show. Check out Holiday Coro using the link in the description to support this channel. Here are the nine cameras that I'll be testing in this video, starting with the least expensive. For $43, we've got the B-Sider Pan and Tilt Security Camera. The B-Sider features 1080p resolution, no optical zoom, plastic construction, wired or wireless connection, 12 volts power with no PoE, and it's viewable in the ICC app or via OnViv RTSP for NVR compatibility. The B-Sider records to a removable SD card, which is not included, or to the ICC cloud, which keeps three days of motion detection footage for $4.99 a month. Next for $80 is the NetView Sentry Pro, which features three megapixel resolution, no optical zoom, plastic and metal construction, wired or wireless connection, and 12 volt power with no PoE. The NetView Sentry is viewable in the NetView app only and can record to a removable SD card, which is not included, or to the NetView Cloud, which is $199 per month. For $99 is the brand new Reolink E1 Outdoor, which features five megapixel resolution, three times optical zoom, plastic construction, wired or wireless connection, and 12 volt power with no PoE. The E1 Outdoor is viewable in the Reolink app, web interface, or via OnVIF RTSP. The E1 Outdoor records to a removable SD card, which is not included, or to the Reolink Cloud, which is free to store seven days of footage for a single camera, or $349 a month for 30 days of footage on up to five cameras. Also from Reolink for $229 is the RLC 423, which features five megapixel resolution, four times optical zoom, it has metal and plastic construction, and a wired only connection with PoE Plus or a typical 12 volt barrel jack for power. The RLC 423 is viewable in the Reolink app via a web interface or via OnVIF RTSP. Like the E1 Outdoor, the RLC 423 records to a removable SD card, which is not included, or to the Reolink cloud, which is free to store seven days of footage for a single camera or $349 a month for 30 days of footage on up to five cameras. For $239, I got a camera sold by VicViz that lacks any branding and just claims to be HikeVision compatible. This camera, which I will refer to for the rest of the video as HikeVision compatible, is eight megapixels with 18 times optical zoom. The HikeVision compatible has plastic and metal construction and wired only connection with PoE plus or a typical 12 volt barrel jack for power. The HikeVision compatible is viewable in HikeVision's Hike Connect mobile app, via web interface or on VIF RTSP, and also features a removable SD card for recording. Next is the Uniview IPC 675 blah 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 that's on the screen, which has an MSRP of $559, but an actual street price of around $299. The Uniview features five megapixels with four times optical zoom, all plastic construction and wired only connection with PoE plus or a typical 12 volt barrel jack for power. The Uniview is viewable in the EasyView app, web interface, or via OnVIF RTSP, and records to a removable SD card, which is not included. The next three cameras are all priced the same at $499. The first is the Amcrest IP4M 1063EWAI, which features four megapixel resolution, 25 times optical zoom, very sturdy metal and plastic construction, and wired only connection with PoE plus or 12 volt barrel connectors for power. The Amcrest is viewable in the Amcrest View Pro app, 
via the web interface or on VIF RTSP and records to a removable SD card, which isn't included. It can also theoretically record to the Amcrest Cloud app, but that requires a separate app that I wasn't actually able to get this camera working in. Also for $499 is the Lorex LNZ 44P12B, which features four megapixel resolution, 12 times optical zoom, very sturdy metal and plastic construction, and wired only connection with PoE Plus or a 12 volt barrel connector for power. The Lorex camera is viewable in the Lorex home app, web interface, or via OnVIF RTSP, and records to a removable SD card, which is not included. Last is the most unique camera I tested, which is the $499 Amarillo Ares Pro. The Amarillo features 1080p resolution with no optical zoom, all plastic construction, wired or wireless connection, and PoE Plus or a 12 volt barrel connector for power. The Amarillo is viewable in the Amarillo app or via RTSP, though enabling RTSP does disable many of the camera's main features, including recording to the included 8GB of internal storage. Recordings can also be saved to the Amarillo Cloud for $2.99 a month for three days of storage. In order to be able to compare these cameras to dozens of non-PTZ cameras that I've reviewed in the past, I set them up in the same location and ran my standard set of tests before looking at PTZ-specific functionality. First, let's check out their field of view. The field of view is determined by the focal length of the camera, the lens geometry, and the sensor size. Field of view is an extremely important consideration for traditional security cameras, but maybe less so for PTZ cameras because they can easily move around in different areas. In these cameras, there was a huge variation in field of view. The largest field of view was the Uniview, and then the E1 Outdoor, then the Net View, and very closely behind that, the B Sider. Slightly more zoomed in was the Reolink RLC 423 and then the Amarillo. The three largest cameras were also the most zoomed in, with the Lorex having slightly wider field of view than the Amcrest and the Hike Vision compatible being the most zoomed in with the smallest field of view out of all the cameras that I tested. Again, let's check out that huge range in field of view comparing the Uniview to the Hike Vision compatible. Next, I wanted to measure the clarity of the images, which I usually do by holding up a sign with 72 point font and 144 point font at 10 feet, 25 feet, and 50 feet. But because field of view and zoom have significant effects on the clarity of the image, I did my best to replicate the same field of view in each of the cameras where zoom was available. Starting with those standardized views on the zoom cameras at 25 feet, the Hike Vision compatible produced a very legible image of both the 144 and 72 point font followed closely by the Uniview, which did a good job with both font sizes, but had some blurring due to 3D noise reduction. Next was the Reolink RLC 423, which also had significant blurring, but was still very legible. The Lorex had less blurring, but some distortion in the small text, and the Amcrest had even more distortion, even losing the shape of the sign slightly. Unfortunately, the Reolink E1 Outdoor was blown out and the text was completely invisible. The non-zoom cameras expectedly performed worse, with the net view doing the best of the remaining three cameras, and then the B-Sider, and then the last was the Amarillo that produced a completely blurry and blown out image of the sign at just 25 feet. The results were similar at 50 feet, except for the Lorex produced the best image, in which the 72 point font is almost still legible. Then the Hike Vision compatible produced a good but blurry image, similar to the Reolink, which also relied heavily on that image post-processing to reduce pixelation. Next was the Uniview, which produced a slightly less legible image of the 144 point font, and then the E1 Outdoor, which was both blurry and a little distorted. And unfortunately last, the Amcrest produced a distorted and pixelated image that I wouldn't have been able to read if I didn't already know what it said. For the non-zoom cameras, the B-Sider at least reproduced the general shape of the sign and indicated that there was text on it, while the Amarillo again produced a blurry sign with no text, and the Netview produced a completely unrecognizable image at 50 feet. As I mentioned before, I'm not sure that field of view is that big of a deal in these cameras since their main feature is to be able to move around. So the next thing that I wanted to do was test their pan, tilt, and zoom capabilities. For this test, I set up a tour where the camera would jump through different preset positions. Important criteria in this test was accuracy of reproducing the preset position, speed of movement, and focus acquisition in the new positions. Starting with accuracy, the Lorex and Amcrest cameras performed the best and were able to accurately recall their positions even after multiple power cycles and taking the cameras up and down in different tests. The Hike Vision compatible and Uniview also did well in this test, but I noticed that there was a small amount of variation after taking the cameras up and down for testing. The Reolink RLC 423 also did a good job recalling positions, but it was the easiest to get out of alignment if it got bumped while the power was on. 
The RLC 423 also couldn't set its presets in Blue Iris, but once I set them up in the Reolink app, they could be recalled from Blue Iris. The Reolink E1 Outdoor that I have was not able to accurately recall preset positions at all. I think something may have been wrong with the internal gearing causing it to slip and get out of calibration. Even if it was just a defect in my unit, I think that the durability of those plastic gears is concerning, especially if you're going to use the PTZ functionality in this camera on a regular basis. The Amarillo, B-Sider, and NetView cameras weren't able to store presets at all, so all of my PTZ testing was done by manually controlling them via the app. Next, for speed of the PTZ functionality, I set up a four-position tour and measured not only the time that it takes to get to the expected position, but also the time to acquire the correct focus at that position. In this category, the Lorex did a fantastic job taking a total of 10.86 seconds to move through all four preset positions, or an average of 2.715 seconds per movement. Next was the Amcrest that took a total of 15 seconds to get from point to point through each of the four preset positions for an average of 3.75 seconds. Then the Uniview took 16 seconds for an average of four seconds each and did a fantastic job maintaining focus throughout the movement. The Hike Vision also scored decently, taking just 18.4 seconds in total for an average of 4.6 seconds per movement. And last was the Reolink RLC 423 that really struggled with optimal pathing between presets and took a significant time focus hunting after each movement. A good chunk of Reolink's total move time was caused by these issues in focus once it reached its position, and it ended up taking 39 seconds total or an average of 9.75 seconds per movement. As I mentioned before, the E1 Outdoor wasn't able to accurately recall any of its preset positions and experienced similar focus hunting problems to the RLC 423. Just based on the footage that I collected, it seems like the E1 Outdoor might have done a better job with finding optimal path, but it's hard to say for sure since none of the preset positions were accurately recalled. The remaining footage is mostly to give you an idea of the speed that each camera moved, but the B-Sider, NetView, and Amarillo cameras couldn't be accurately judged in this category since they not only lack the ability to create custom presets, but they also don't have any zoom capabilities, so their focus is always locked in in the same point. I will say on these three remaining cameras, I did find the pan and tilt on the B-Sider to be the easiest to operate in the app, with the Amarillo and NetView having enough lag that I often overshot the position that I wanted to look at. For zoom performance, I used the Tampa Bay Buccaneers flag in my neighbor's yard roughly 120 feet away as a reference point to take these images from the different zoom cameras. I was surprised by how similar each camera performed despite the fact that their zoom capabilities ranged from 12x on the Lorex to 18x on the Hike Vision Compatible and 25x on the Amcrest. In this category, the Hike Vision Compatible's 4K resolution and 18x zoom really shine and produced this amazing image. Next, the Lorex's 12x zoom did extremely well, even with half the resolution of the Hike Vision. And even though the Amcrest has the highest advertised optical zoom, it seemed to have some real issues with video compression that resulted in more digital artifacts than I'd like to see. I actually went through after this test and double checked that it was on the same compression settings as the rest of the cameras, just to be sure. The Uniview had a few things working against it. First, it only has four times optical zoom. And second, it had the greatest initial field of view, meaning four times the zoom barely gets it to the initial field of view of the hike vision. Still, it outperformed the four times optical zoom of the Reolink RLC 423, and predictably the worst performer in the zoom cameras was the Reolink E1 Outdoor with only three times optical zoom. Next, to measure the nighttime infrared performance of each camera, I repeated the same test from the daytime, but I used the 25 foot image for the comparison. For these tests, the IR on the camera was on and each camera was in night mode. In these tests, the RLC 423 produced the clearest nighttime image with no noticeable ghosting during movement. The Hike Vision compatible was a close second and did a great job illuminating the entire scene without blowing out the details on my face. Next was the Uniview that also did a great job illuminating my face and capturing detail. After that was the Lorex that produced a flatter image, meaning that the shadows were lighter and the highlights were dimmer, not a bad image, but harder to see facial detail. And just as we saw in the other test, the Amcrest seems to have compression issues which cause artifacts in the video and make it difficult to read the text on the sign and see facial detail. After that, there was a pretty sharp drop off where the E1 Outdoor, NetView, and B-Sider produced nighttime images with poor detail and lots of digital artifacting, and the Amarillo's image was unacceptably bad. And aside from confirming that a human was present, it wouldn't be useful for much else, even at only 25 feet. A newer category that many people seem to be interested in is nighttime color images. So I ran the same test again without the IR LEDs and I forced each camera into daytime mode. 
If the camera had white LEDs available, I enabled them. The Uniview image is significantly better than the rest in this category due to the fact that it has white LEDs, but the B-Sider and E1 Outdoor also have white LEDs and didn't produce nearly as high quality of an image. The Amcrest did okay with just ambient lights from my porch, while the Amarillo performed terribly despite its very noticeable white LEDs. For whatever reason, I couldn't convince the Hike Vision or Lorex cameras to turn off their black and white mode, but they still produce decent images without their infrared lights on, albeit black and white. And last, the RLC 423 produced a basically all black image without its IR LEDs. Wrapping it up, let's take a look at the extra features of these cameras. The feature that I was initially most interested in was auto motion tracking that follows a moving subject around. The B-Sider, Reolink E1 Outdoor, and Amarillo all offer this feature, but after testing it, I can see why it's not a more standard feature. Occasionally, auto tracking worked very well, but for the most part, it caused the camera to search around aimlessly, which made it distracting to have up on my computer screen because out of the corner of my eye, I couldn't tell the difference between actual movement and the camera just randomly deciding to pan around. Even worse, at night, bugs can trigger the auto tracking, and depending on where the bug is, it might cause you to miss an important motion event somewhere else in the camera's range. Auto tracking is definitely something that I would classify as a toy and not a tool. However, similar to auto tracking, the Amcrest and Uniview cameras have smart features like person detection, facial detection, line crossing, abandoned objects, and missing object tracking. These features can trigger recordings, PTZ presets, or even trigger the relay output for an external alarm siren. An interesting use case for these features might be to combine them with their great zoom capabilities to record license plates in states like Florida that only require a rear license plate. You can use the directional line crossing with a car filter to trigger a PTZ position that zooms in on the road to capture license plates for passing cars before returning to its home position. So which PTZ camera is best? In my opinion, it is hard to argue with the value of the Hike Vision compatible camera from VicViz. Not only did it perform very well in all the clarity tests, but it has the highest resolution, best zoom performance, sturdy construction, great compatibility, and it's relatively affordable. If you need a larger maximum field of view, the Uniview camera also produced excellent results as long as you don't need large zoom capabilities. The Lorex and Amcrest cameras seem to be the most well-built and reliable cameras for harsh conditions. And between the two, the Lorex had better video clarity while the Amcrest had more advanced features. If you're looking for a fun wireless camera to mess around, the B-Sider is cheap, but it shouldn't be used as a replacement for high quality security cameras. If you're interested in buying any of these cameras, I've got Amazon affiliate links down in the description that allow me to earn a small commission off the sale of these cameras at no additional cost to you. If you decide against PTZ cameras after watching this video, please go check out my reviews on non-PTZ cameras to find the best fit for you. Thank you so much to my awesome patrons over at Patreon for your continued support of my channel. If you're interested in supporting my channel, please check out the links down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.